let me demonstrate once more why masking in Lightroom is so powerful. For the purpose of this video, we are going to turn this HDR panorama into this final image. You can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. Before we do any masking, we have to do the basic raw adjustments first in order to get a well balanced exposure of this image. This means the very first step we want to do is, besides some cropping, we want to open up the basic panel. I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape since this will already brighten up the darkest parts and it will also give us some more base saturation. Now, since this is an HDR image, we can play around quite a bit with the exposure. I want to bring it up a lot so we get more detail from those very dark areas towards the edge. Just around here looks good. Of course, this will blow out the sky. So to fix that, I'm going to bring down the highlights. And again, since we are working with an HDR file, we can safely play around like that without making the image look weird. So that's much better already. We can further work on this by bringing up the shadows. We can also bring up the blacks. And taking a look at the histogram, it looks quite nice, but we do have some room left right here in the bright side. So what we can do to introduce more contrast is to play around with the whites, slightly increasing them until we almost hit that overexposed point right here. So I'm quite happy with how the exposure is looking at the moment. I do want to introduce some texture, just giving the image some sharper, smaller details. And at the same time, I'm bringing down the clarity a little bit, giving the overall image a soft look. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance. Done. So here you can see the comparison from the original raw file to the edited image with a bunch of base adjustments. And this is very important since now we get a better overview of what we need to do from this point on. A few things you can see immediately is the waterfall itself is a little too dark, which we need to fix. Also, we can work on the edges of the image, giving them more structure and making them a little darker. These are all things we can do with masks. So let's open up the mask panel. And I guess let's start with something easy. I want to further fix this area in the sky, making the highlights darker, but also adding a little bit of subtle glow around the bright spot. Therefore, we can use a simple radial gradient, just like this. I'm going to tilt it a little bit, so we are fitting the shape of this hole right there in the trees, just like that. Also, I want to have a very soft effect, so I'm making sure the feather of this radial gradient is set to 100. If I would bring it down, we would get a super hard edge, which looks just unnatural. So bring it up all the way and let's go expand the tone panel first. As I said, I want to further bring down the highlights, revealing some structure in the sky. So let's just do that. And I really only want to do tiny adjustments to not make it too obvious, but this is looking good. Now for the glow effect, we can stay in the tones panel and just bring up the blacks slightly, giving this area right inside that radial gradient some light bloom effect. I think that's a bit too much. Right about here looks good. We can make this effect stronger. So for that, let's collapse the tone panel and go right into the effects. And here we want to reduce the dehaze. When reducing the haze, be very, very careful because this will also have an impact on the brightness and we don't want to overexpose this area. But something around here looks really, really nice, very subtle, but it's a very cool effect. Let's continue with another radial gradient. I'm going to select pretty much that center part with the river in the foreground. And what I want to do here is I want to simply brighten up this area to get some more attention right here in the center. And all I need to do after creating this radial gradient is again go into the tone menu and just slightly raise the exposure. This is already enough. Now what about this waterfall? This mask is a little more complex to create. However, it's not a big deal. Let's create a new mask and we could go with color range or luminance range. I'm going to use a color range 
and I'm just clicking right in here in the waterfall. As you can see, this works pretty good selecting the waterfall. We could use the refine tool to make the selection a little more precise, maybe bring it down a notch. However, we also have selected other areas of the image as well, since the waterfall is not the only area with this exact color. So what we want to do is to click on those three dots right here, choose intersect mask width, and then let's choose a radial gradient. Using the intersect tool, we can place the radial gradient over the waterfall, since now the color range mask and the radial gradient are intersecting each other. We are creating the perfect mask for the waterfall and only for the waterfall. So to make the waterfall brighter, all we need to do is to again just bring up the exposure. And I'm going to make it quite a lot brighter than before to make it nicely visible. Perfect. Now what about the edges of the image? As I said in the intro, I want to make them darker and add a little more detail to them. Let's start this by using a linear gradient. I am going to be covering most of the left side like this. And let's add another linear gradient right away on the right side. And in here, let's go into the effects panel and bring up the clarity, which will give the walls more structure. This is looking really, really good. Keep in mind, just use tiny adjustments. We don't want to overdo it. Now, what about the brightness? I'm going to use a new linear gradient and I'm covering the bottom left and right corner like this. Again, I'm adding another linear gradient for the other side. And all we need to do here is to bring down the exposure. Keep in mind to pay close attention to the histogram to not underexpose anything, but that is looking really, really good. Now, what I am missing at this point is some more autumn colors in the distance. So let's say right here. Luckily for us, Adobe continues to add very, very helpful tools to the masking stuff in Lightroom. So let's create a new radial gradient and just target the forest in the distance like this. Before the recent update, changing the foliage of the trees in the distance would be kind of hard to do in Lightroom. However, since Adobe has added a new tool, we can simply go to the point color menu within this panel, click on the eyedropper, and then select the color you want to change. So I want to change those green tones right here, I'm clicking on them. And this will basically give us HSL options within this mask. So what we can do here is we can shift the hue first. Let's bring the green tones down into the yellow range for that. That's looking pretty good. We can also bring up the saturation, making them more intense. And we can also bring up the luminance, making them brighter or darker. And if we want, we could even further adjust the range we are selecting, depending on the hue, saturation or luminance, or simply use that range slider right here. So you can see, this is very, very powerful. The first time using it, however, can be a little bit complicated, I guess. Let's deactivate the mask so we can see the difference from before to after. Looks much more interesting this way. Now I think we're done with the masking. Let's take a look at the image before and after the masking applied. This was our image after just a bunch of basic adjustments. And here we have the image with masking applied. Right away, you can see the image has a lot more depth since we have manipulated the light in certain areas of the image. So for example, making the edges darker, adding some more brightness to the center, or adding more brightness to the main subject, in this case, the waterfall. All of this helps creating dynamic, engaging images. And in most of the cases, you will have to apply masking to achieve those effects. Now, from this point on, we can continue doing a little bit of color grading. So let's get out of that masking panel, go back to the edit menu. And what we want to do next is let's go into the color mixer. We can further work on the hue, saturation and luminance. So first off, let's start with the hue. I do want to slightly bring up the orange hue, giving us some more yellow tones for this image. 
And I do want to bring down the yellow hue slightly. All right, that's looking good so far. Let's head over into the saturation tab. Here I want to bring up the saturation of most of the warmer color tones. So let's start with red, orange, yellow, uh, maybe even a little bit of the green tones. And I do want to bring the blue tones up as well. Now we're almost done editing this image. I'm not going to apply any split toning for it since I really love the colors. I do want to head into the calibration tab, however, bringing the blue primary hue slightly down, which always looks good on those autumn shots, in my opinion. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation here. Let's bring it up quite a bit since I like how this looks. All right. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. As always, I'm using the same settings. Bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. So once more, let's take a look at the before and after comparison. Compared to the original RAW file, we do have a much better looking image. Of course, there are still gaps towards the edges of the image because, well, this is a panoramic image, so we want to fix them. Sadly, there is no way to fix them in Lightroom. That's why I'm going to fix them in Photoshop real quick. So right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. And all we need to do here is to select the gaps. So we can do that rather quickly. Hold down the control key and click on the thumbnail of the layer. This will select the image. So we need to invert the selection to get the gaps. So hit Control Shift I. This is a pretty good selection. However, we want to expand it a bit. So go to select, choose modify and choose expand. I'm just going with four pixels. This should be enough. And once this is done, hit Shift F5 with content aware selected and hit OK. The reason for me not to use the new generative fill is because this is a rather large image and generative fill is at the moment restricted on a very low amount of pixels. So using content aware on those smaller gaps, we get a much higher quality compared to generative fill. And here we have the finished image. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions about the editing or have anything to add about the masking process, feel free to write a comment for this video. And thank you so much for watching.